Um, today I'm going to just do a quick little project on a run of some pens for some uh, co-workers uh, that are moving on to other positions. Uh, we're going through some changes uh, at the day job and um, so, uh, you know, I like to um, make pens and give those as gifts uh, in recognition of, uh, you know, the time that I've worked with them over the years. So, um, so I'm going to do that. And uh, one of the things I've added to the shop recently, um, something I'm just going to try out, it's this little uh, camcorder. I was watching a Captain Eddie Castellan video recently. He was talking about using camcorders in the shop. And I think you guys know that uh, uh, essentially I, I'm using a cell phone as my camera. So um, what I wanted to do is just you know add a little bit more camera capability um, and not that there's anything wrong with the cell phones, but um, one thing that this one will allow me to do is it comes with a remote so I can do zooming without having to mess with the cell phone. Um, also comes with this directional mic on it. Don't know if it's any good. I'm going to give it a shot. Um, I think I picked this thing up on Amazon for like 80 bucks. So it's supposedly full HD and we're going to try it. We're going to see what the quality is like. Uh, I don't... Uh, sponsor or sell anything so uh, you know I'm just gonna try it and let you guys know what I think um, and uh, hopefully it'll uh, become part of the you know equipment that I use around the shop so uh, on that note let's go ahead and get started on a couple pens okay guys um, I'm going to I'd uh, be doing six pens today. I've got a box of blanks here I've cut up from various stuff. Um, uh, I'm going to use some, uh, I believe this is bloodwood. So some bloodwood. Um, this is Honduran rosewood. Okay. Probably get two pens out of that. I got a grand, piece of granadillo here. Definitely get two pens out of that. Some figured Asian satin wood. You can see, I don't know if you can see the curl in there. Really nice. And a nice piece of olive wood. So uh, I'm going to cut these, uh, drill them on the lathe, and then we'll get to turning. Alright guys, well, I'm uh, here at the little bandsaw. This is where I'm going to do the cutting. What I'm doing right now with uh, the kits that I'm using are the trim line kits from PSI. Um, what I'm going to be doing is just marking on the blanks here. Uh, the tubes are the same length. And what I want to do is give myself a little bit of room on each end and make a mark. Okay, again from that mark, leave myself a little bit of room, make another mark. Okay, and then from those marks, I'm just going to take my little square and mark them square. Okay. Okay, and what I'm going to do then is I'm going to just put it up here on the bandsaw and cut on those lines. Okay, just a reminder, when you're trying to maintain the continuity of the grain on your pen, um, these will be my two segments. Um, uh, so here's the center line. I have made a mark here, and... Um, that is to remind me which ends match up so that when I do the cut that I always have the right orientation uh, when I reassemble the pen so that the grain lines back up again. Alright guys, here we've got it. There's uh, six sets of blanks here now for the pens. Um, these are the offcuts. I've got a couple of pieces for either um, some uh, Wall Street slash Sierra slash Grand, uh, what is it, uh, Gatsby type pens, uh, which are single barrel type pens. Um, so that's for another day. Um, now let's take these over and drill them on the lathe. Turners. I've got my uh, drilling chuck set up uh, in the tailstock. I've got my uh, pen jaws and I'm going to be putting on the headstock. Again, this is the uh, set of the 
economy jaws from PSI with the uh, economy 10 jaws that go with it. Uh, they work really well for me, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm start with the Duke. I'm sorry, Bloodwood. Um, and uh, start drilling these. Okay, the, um, the trim line kit, which is similar to a slim line, just fatter is based on a 7mm pen tube, um, so I'm going to take my 7mm drill bit and uh, get that checked up and do some drilling. Alright guys, I uh, have now eight sets. I'm going to end up making eight pens. I remembered a couple more people I want to make some pens for, so since I'm going to run a little production run of these, um, they're all nicely drilled. As far as why do I use the um, drilling on the lathe, it just it's one of the best methods for keeping the blanks exactly centered, and you get centered holes on both sides. So. Now let's go over to the little Excelsior lathe. Alright guys, next up in the process I've got um, tubes to glue into the blanks. But before I do that I'm going to take some rough sandpaper. I like to use the, uh, what is this, 120, 150 grit, 150 grit. Just a little piece of it. What I do is I take each tube like this. Just give it a few turns. Um, one side, the other. That just gives that brass a little tooth. And uh, that way when you glue them in, they don't... Uh, the, uh, the glue sticks a little better and they don't tend to break out or slide out. So, 14 more to go. Okay, there we have 16 scratched up shiny brass tubes ready for insertion. Okay, I'm going to start with the um, Honduras Rosewood. Um, I've got a really fancy tube insertion tool here. It's just an off cut. Um, and what I like to also use are Q-tips. So um, what I do is I um, have a tube ready. You might have seen this in my other pen video. I put some CA in the blank, just with a circular motion. Okay. I use the Q-tip kind of as a plunger to smear that around in there. I take the tube and I lay a little bead around two-thirds of the length of it. And then using a twisting motion, you get a little pool of the CA forming on top. Twist that in and then I push that in. Okay, that's seated. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to set aside and let it dry and go on to the next one. Same thing. Squeeze in some CA glue. Okay. Use the Q-tip. Plunge it around in there. Get a good coat inside. Okay. And now my tube ready. Take the tube the bead, okay. twisting motion, okay. make sure I've got CA flooding all around that guy, okay, so 14 more. Alright guys, there we are, um, eight sets of blanks with tubes inserted, ready for barrel trimming and then turning on the lake.
Alright guys, once you've got the basic shape, now you're just going to sand through the grits. Uh, for something that I finished, this is pretty good. Um, I used a skew to clean that up as a scraper. I'm going to actually start at 320 and then work my way up to 600. This little setup I've got with this uh, little Niji Chinese laser engraver and um, my little computer I've got it set up. I'm going to do engravings on these pens. I've got the, um, the olive in there right now so I've got the rest of the blanks back here. I'm just going to be doing the cap or, or um, clip upper section of the barrels. So. Um, uh, I showed you guys how to do this in the other pen video. Uh, it's just really easy with the software. Um, economical laser engraver can't say really much more about it. So let's get started on this. There's the name. <clears throat> now I'm just going to flip it around and right on this side. Okay guys, here I am at the little Harbor Freight lathe and uh, what I'm doing is I'm putting uh, one of the, I've got, I don't know if you can see that very well, but there's the laser engraving on there. And uh, now it's time for the um, the finishing, get that snug. What I do after I do the laser engraving, sometimes there's a little residue uh, on top of here. I give it a really light sanding just to make sure there's no residue left on top of there. Okay, that get rid. It's like a almost like a smoky residue. And uh, what I like to do also is use these uh, Harbor Freight um, nitro gloves um, because what I'm essentially going to be doing is taking some of this blue shop towel okay. I'm going to um, use a little boiled linseed oil on here like so just a smidge okay. I'm going to have my thin CA ready to go here Start this out. Uh, I don't want it too fast. I usually have it about that speed for the application. And I get ready and I put a little bit on here and just move it back and forth. Okay, this is the lower barrel. And there's the upper barrel. Okay, see the combination of the CA and the boiled linseed oil just gives that a real nice dark tone. Um, this is the Granadillo. Um, it'll uh, do a nice job in all the others as well. So I'm going to go through and give it about four or five coats this way. Um, I don't want a real shiny finish. I just want a, you know, a nice durable finish. Okay, And uh, I'll show you what these look like when I'm done. Well guys, here's um, five of the blanks. Uh, this probably represents all the different woods that I used. Um, there's the Granadillo. Um, this is the olive. Olive came out real nice. This is that figured 
Asian satinwood, beautiful. Um, this is the rosewood, beautiful green on there too. And then this is that uh, bloodwood. So <clears throat> now the next step will be to um, uh, uh, press these components together and uh, actually make pens out of them. All right, Turners, here we are at my little homemade pen press. It's just a pony clamp and a little jig. You saw this on the other pen turning video. I'm going to do this set of the Granadillo uh, for the first pen. Um, I'm going to do it in, I was looking at chrome, but I think I want to try the gunmetal, so I'm going to use the gunmetal component sets. Um, <coughs> these are really easy to assemble. Um, it's just like doing a slimline. Uh, you want to start, or I do anyway, with a nib, um, and so this is the this is going to be the nib one uh, section down here. And again, for me, this little um, press works. I mean, really well. It's and just a little hand crank. Um, and there you go. That part is pressed in there. Got a nice transition there, okay. And uh, the next component to press in is going to be the transmission. So I'm going to open this up a bit. Okay. I'm going to set that transmission in there. Press that in. Transmissions are a little tricky because. Um, you want to make sure that you uh, get them to the right depth. I don't push them in too far before I stop and try the ink. And all I do is I slide it in like so and I see how far does it extend. Not far enough. Okay, So I retract it and remove the ink. I see that I've got a little bit more room to press it in. I'm going to go ahead and press it a little further. Okay. That's good. Try it again. Oops. I guess it's all the same ink, doesn't matter. I'll take that one. See how far that comes out. Oh, I like that well enough, but I think I'm going to push it out a little bit further. Okay, just a touch. Okay, that should be good enough right there. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. And it still fully retracts. Okay, advance, retract. Okay, that part is done. And here is the center band as part of this component set. Okay, so now we have the nib and the center band. Okay, now for the upper barrel portion, there's a clip and a ferrule. It it's going to get pressed, okay? And on this particular uh, upper section, because I've got the engraving, I want to make sure I line up the um, clip in between the name and the organization, which is on the other side. So let me reorient that a little bit. Okay, start pressing this. Just kind of generally hold the uh, clip in a particular place. Doesn't. Um, it's not until I get ready to actually set it that I'll make sure it's in the right place. Okay, and this final pressing just secures that clip so it's not going to wander around. Okay, so that's set. Okay. I've centered it with the organization name and the person's name. Okay, and then you remember those dots I made earlier. There's one here. There's one over here. Okay, so I know these are my alignment dots for the grain. So what I will do is I will slide it together. Make sure I've got good grain alignment. Okay, advance, retract. This pen is done. Okay. Seven more.
Well, Turners, this is the final lot of the assembled pens. Um, I actually have more than the eight here. I've got a few extra down at this end. I made a stylus pen. I don't know if you can see the stylus on there. Um, that's also rosewood. Um, and I got a couple more trim lines that I did in this homemade blank. It's purple and gold. I'm going to call it my Lakers pen. And then the rest of these are going to some well-deserving folks um, where I work who are either being displaced or laid off. Now that's a lot of people. The olive figure came out really nice. I'm really happy about that. As well as this uh, satin wood. Just all the stripes in that are just tremendous. Anyway, um, we're done. Well, Turners, thanks again for joining me uh, for a quick project. The pens were fun. So I just wanted to thank all the new subscribers. Um, there's been a bunch, and thanks for joining us uh, for the journey. Also, uh, I just wanted to mention that I've shot this entire video, with the exception of the introduction, um, using this new camera. So the journey, uh, I'm sorry, the jury is still out on this camera. I'm not, I think the picture quality is okay. I'm not quite sold on the sound quality. So we'll see. Again, it was a bargain camera, and uh, it will probably have its place um, in some of the shoots that I do. Um, I may stick with the cell phone for a while too, and especially for the over the over the lathe shots. So again, if you like the video, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you for the next one.